Okay, good morning, the 26th day of Shabbat. Beautiful Monday morning, February 5th. Charlie, ready? Okay, guys, listen to this. You know, if you try to educate your children, and let's pick, try to get them up and ready for school in the morning. You know, there are different tactics you try. One day, one thing works. Another day, you know, one day you're a little tough. You're like, let's go, let's go. You're going to miss the bus. And another day you might say, listen, if you get up early and you get up or you get up on time, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to buy you something. And another day you say, you know what? I'm going to leave it up to you. Let's see if you can do it on your own. No reward, no punishment. There's always different angles. So that's what the Alter Rebbe, it seems repetitive. But the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, is trying to get us to learn Torah. Do a mitzvah, daven to Hashem with kavana, because that is going to bring us the love and fear that we've started upon. This whole theme of getting closer and closer to Hashem. So, my microphone is muted. That's not good. Start over. My camera was off. Don't know how that happened. Okay. Um, I think it was picked up. I'm not sure. But anyways. So you could argue that in reality. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just back up for a second. Today's lesson. Every Yid is willing to give their lives from Sir Snefesh for the sanctification of God's name. Now you could argue that in reality, it's not an option. I'm not willing to give up my life. Or maybe it's never going to happen. Maybe that scenario is never going to come my way. So the Talmud says that when a person does an Avera, because he relies a lot of times, remember we said the last couple of days, we said that a person doesn't do an Avera, unless stupidity comes into his mind. Eh, big deal. That's not, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not eating pork. So it doesn't have a hechser. Big deal. I'm sure it's okay. Just the starting point, you know. Or if a person flips on the switch and shouts, like, what's going to happen? Watch, you'll see, nothing's going to happen. Like, we start with the minor things. So the Talmud says, when one does an Avera, he relies on Shuva, Shem's going to forgive him. We all know the concept of Shuva. Every day we say it a number of times. We say it, and we ask Hashem forgiveness before we go to sleep. But if we rely on it, it's not good. Hashem does not allow him to practice Shuvah if a person relies on it. Since he cannot rely on this, then the only alternative is to sacrifice himself, to remain permanently separate from idolatry, separate from sin, and connected to Hashem. So with a minor sin, the separation from Hashem that it causes in any case, even if it's temporary, even without recourse to tshuva, what happens? Again, with a minor sin, however, the separation from Hashem that it causes is in any case temporary, even without recourse to tshuva. You would think, oh, just a little of Eira. Forget about tshuva. I'm not even going to do tshuva. It's so minor, I don't even need to do tshuva. Bav shaoimer echteva oshuv. Ein ma speaking. Talmud says, he who says, I'll do a, a little of Eira, and tomorrow, you know, tomorrow morning, I'll do Shuvah, it'll be okay. Because Shuvah is not accepted. Yet this means that Hashem does not aid such a sinner, granting him the ability to do Shuvah. So generally, if a person is sincere, and he asks him forgiveness, he gets forgiven. However, when one relies on Shuvah, Shuvah for the basis of his Avera, he's not given the strength nor the opportunity to do Shuvah. So if a person errs, and we talk about this, listen, for all the average guy that wants to do the right thing, and we strive to do the right thing, and sometimes we have setbacks, and we do, unfortunately, we fall into the Yetzirah's trap. And as we mentioned, the stupidity enters our mind that it's not a big deal. Uh, this is such a minor thing. Nobody really cares. Nobody sees. It's not, a, it's not important. 
But if a person does something on purpose, saying that the tshuva is going to bring him back, Hashem's good graces, then tshuva is not going to help. If, however, he seizes the opportunity himself and he does tshuva, nothing can stand in the way of tshuva. <laughs> so here's a little interesting catch. Let's say a person does an Aveira and he says, oh, the tshuva is going to be mechap for my Aveira, so I'll do the Aveira anyway. That's not going to work. But what if at after the fact, he says, you know what? When I was thinking that the tshuva is going to atone for my sin, and therefore I sinned anyway, but that in and of itself was stupidity and nonsense and stupid and, and obviously false. So you know what? Now I'm going to do tshuva on the concept that I thought that tshuva was going to help my Avera. I'm not sure that's exactly what Tantan was saying, but this is what I'm thinking right now. So in that particular case, so even the case of idolatry, who's going to bow down to an idol? We're never going to do that. We're going to start. The, it gets hard to start small. It builds his way up. But even in such a case, one can conceivably rely on tshuva to prevent a lasting separation from Hashem. When the dust settles, and when he realizes how stupid his whole thought process was, and says, you know what? I, I can feel terrible. I talk and feel bad. I can't believe that I got into such a trap. <laughs> then, Shuvah is always going. Hashem is waiting for a return. Every yid is prepared and ready to suffer martyrdom, to give up his life for the sanctification of God's name. In theory, again, we could discuss this. And you could say, no, no, I'd rather live to see another day. But in theory, every single yid is ready to do such a thing. He's not going to perform an idolatrous act, even in trickery, you know, oh, pick up this ring. You're not bowing down. You're just picking up the, you know, and then you have to bow down to pick it up. Even temporarily, he wouldn't do such a thing, even if he thinks, oh, I could do tshuva later. Talking about when we do, you know, that little calculation with Hashem, that's something minor. Uh, Jeff is not here. Jeff is not here. Okay, good. Bye, Ali. Love you. Bye. Have a good one. See you soon. So now, we're almost done, by the way. One more one more line. This is because, why can't I? Why is, it, why is every single Jew ready to give up his life rather than bow down to an idol, even if it's temporary or trickery? Because the divine light, which is enclosed in his soul, that spark, that neshama, that burns very strong, as explained above, which has not come within the realm of time at all, but transcends all time. It's part of Hashem. And therefore, in relation to this light, every action is eternal. So, Past, present, future, he's never going to do such a thing. Furthermore, as is known that this divine light rules and dominates time, not only is it governed by law of time, I'm sorry, not only is it not governed by the laws of time, but on the contrary, it governs them. It governs time because it is a part of Hashem. Thus an action which took but a moment and judged by temporal standards has no value. It can be more momentous than one which takes much longer. Since the divine light clothed in the soul transcends and dominates time, it does not permit any separation from Hashem, no matter how short a time its duration. So the takeaway is, again, it seems like we're being repetitive and we're just kind of hitting things from different angles. What's the point? That Hashem is present in your soul at all times. And Hashem gives you the power to act in ways that you thought you were incapable of. So that's if you're facing... Die or bow to the idol, you're willing to die. But what about a minor thing? What about something where you're uncomfortable? There's the rabbi is not there. Somebody needs to go to the amud. You're a little uncomfortable. What can I? What can I do? I'd rather die than be embarrassed. No, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go do the right thing. Uh, you know, you get to your car and you realize you didn't pay for something. It takes a lot of courage to go back in 
and say, you know what? I'm going to put the money down and tell them. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. You came back in because you found something that's not on the receipt. It takes a lot of courage. But we have the Abishter in our soul giving us the power. And you're able to do things that you even thought you thought you weren't capable of. Rabbi Akiva could start learning Aleph Beis at age 40 and become the greatest, one of the greatest sages in the Talmud. We have the opportunity to start no matter what age and no matter what station in life. And we can conquer the world one step at a time. We have the power to do so. Now let's go do it. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll be fully functional again and we'll have the power to continue to learn together. Um, with joy and gladness of heart everyone have a wonderful day and enjoy the beautiful weather and the beautiful